Okay then, so this will be the last video. My battery ran out, so I thought probably a good place to, uh, well, put a bit of a divider between the two. So this shelf are Dreamcast games. Is Dreamcast games? Are oh, Dreamcast games? One of them. So we've got Metropolis Street Racer, Jet Set Radio, really good Sega games. We've got Resident Evil 2 and 3 and Code Veronica. I never finished Code Veronica. I really should. But 2 and 3 were fantastic games. Not the longest of games. Uh, yeah, Street Fighter Alpha 3. I, I bought the Dreamcast really to to keep playing these 2D beat em ups because as we'll see in a second a lot of them never made their way out of Japan third strike but, I mean visually that they did a really good job with these Saturn uh, not Saturn Dreamcast conversions but apparently Alpha 3 plays better on the Saturn um, I'd love to play that one day because the Dreamcast one it feels a bit flimsy it's hard to say uh, Skies of Arcadia, that's a very good RPG. I don't have Grandia 2, that's a, another RPG. These are probably the best two on the, the Dreamcast. I think that might have even been made by Sega, if I remember correctly. Sonic Adventure. I like this one. The 3D Sonic games have got a very bad reputation and I'm not a fan of the sequel to this or really Sonic Heroes but I think this had a really nice feel to it, it had a kind of a, another world kind of feel with these ancient ruins and that kind of thing and I think they got that right uh, Headhunter that was a late Dreamcast game it's kind of odd, it plays a little bit like Metal Gear Solid in a way uh, but I don't know if it feels rushed. There's certain elements to it that, like your puzzle elements from Resident Evil, that are in there for a bit and then they disappear. Uh, Cannon Spike. That was a one of the last games that got released on the Dreamcast. I can't remember who published this, but there was a company. I mean, the box art looks really cheap, but you can. Big Ben. That was it. They they released like four games. I think just as or just after Sega was discontinuing the the console in Europe. Blue Stinger. Yeah, this is a good game. I'd love to play the Japanese version. It's the Japanese one has fixed cameras, so it's like Resident Evil, almost like Cobaronica or Dino Crisis. Whereas this one, they they changed it to a more dynamic camera for the European release. So the story with this was it came out before the console got released. I didn't quite have a Dreamcast that early, so I've never been able to confirm or deny that. But that's the story anyway. Uh, we've got Shenmue 1 and 2. I've played Shenmue a few times. I mean, graphically, when it came out, it was amazing. A really nice looking game. That came out in the US. I think Shenmue 2, if I remember correctly, didn't. There was Headhunter and Shenmue 2 and they got European only releases, they didn't get US releases. I've only ever played this once and I like the story but I just felt that with the first Shenmue you were, you were in places too long, there was too much repetition whereas this you kind of fly by things a bit too quick. So with the PlayStation 1 collection, uh, there are a few more games downstairs that I've got next to the PS3. Grandia. This was originally a Saturn game. And I remember reading about this in, in the Saturn magazine. It never came out outside Japan. But fortunately, there was a PS1 release. And uh, Grandia 2, as I said, came out on the, the Dreamcast. And it's a really nice old school style uh, RPG. But it's one of those that didn't try to do too much with the 32-bit the consoles. It kept the old style gameplay. Uh, X2 I've looked at yeah, quite a lot of RPG yeah and just my luck as I'm on the final stretch the memory card fills up so I've had to do a quick edit there and recharge the battery and replace the memory card and get a cup of coffee although that's all invisible in the edit so here are a few PC games I 
tend to keep the ones out that I'm currently playing. Well, or at least will intend to play. Uh, so here we've got some Japanese Saturn games. Although that isn't Japanese, that's uh, the PAL version of Knights. So this one is not Panzer Dragons of I. I got a few of these on eBay and uh, they were in various condition. This is in the wrong box. So that is Panzer Dragons of I. But the game is X-Men vs Street Fighter. And uh, they're not hockey copies or anything, they are the original, it's just I think whoever kept them didn't keep them in the original boxes. Uh, probably in a, some kind of CD case. That's a really good game. It, it needs the 4 megabyte expansion cartridge, but I've got one of those action replays which does the import conversion and, and does that memory expansion as well. Really good game. There's a sequel which is X-Men vs Marvel Super Heroes. Uh, I've yet to play that. Vampire Hunter, so this is the first in the Darkstalkers, or is it the second in the Darkstalkers series? I haven't played this one very much, it's mainly been Vampire Saviour, which is this one. So this one needs the memory cartridge, 4 megabyte one. Visually, this is amazing, I mean, the, it it's clearly a Capcom game, but it doesn't play like Street Fighter, and I think if you're burnt out on Street Fighter style games, but you want a 2D beam up, this is a good one to get. Uh, there's a guy called Riddler on YouTube, spelled slightly differently, and he's done a really good overview of a lot of these games, so I don't really want to repeat that. So I think if you really want to see what these games are like, um, I'd recommend his channel, because he's gone into depth with a lot of these. This is Cyberbots, another Capcom game, another 4 megabyte one, and this is deceptively sim simple, there's only really two or three controls but once you get into it, it's all about doing these combos, so it's like these big fighting robots which is a game I'd never really heard of until I started collecting these King of Fighters 96 hmm, what can I say about this? it's not as good as 97 <laughs> that's probably all I'll say now this one, this is it I used to like 98 on the Dreamcast uh, but this this is as good as it got on the on the Saturn. Probably the only thing better about 96 is it loads faster. This takes ages to load, but it uses the the expansion cartridge as well. And just the the number of characters on this and the quality of the animation. And you know, I don't think there's much between this and the Neo Geo version. It's a good reason to get a Saturn. It's certainly a lot cheaper than buying an AES. But the loading speeds faster than the Neo Geo CD so you get the best of both worlds again with a real about Fatal Fury special I can't remember if this is the first part or the second part I think there was a like an, a revision after this but this is you know, if you want Fatal Fury rather than it being King of Fighters then this is the one to go for Samurai Showdown 3 I haven't played this very much this is a recent game that I've bought it's meant to be one of the, the black sheeps in the family of um, fail, oh, not fail, Samurai Shodan or Samurai Spirits as it is in Japan. They changed the, the graphics on this, they upgraded them, but they changed the gameplay, and I think a lot of people were quite upset. So, what I'll do, I'll quickly bring over the tripod for this one, because this is a this needs a little oops, a little bit of an unboxing, so let me lock that down, because I need two hands for this. This is Samurai Showdown 4. Now this is brilliant. I've looked at this on a previous video. This is slightly special. So this game used the graphic style of Samurai Showdown 3, but it's more classic in its gameplay. So it doesn't have a back cover. Uh, but this is mint. This is, this is as it came. But what it does have in the box... And I d well, I don't use this because I've got the import cartridge, but it's got a, and I'll get this right, this is a 4 megabyte one, I think. Or is it, no, it's an SNK game. So it'll be, a, this is a 1 megabyte cartridge for the Saturn. The 4 megabyte ones, I think, were transparent. They were the ones that Capcom used. So there you go. I don't know if any of the... SNK games took advantage of the 4 megabyte cartridge or whether it was all the 1 megabyte one. 
So this is Virtual Fighter Kid, so again not in the right box, but it's got the manual on the disc. It's a bit like Virtual Fighter 2 really. Uh, this, uh, these two are newer games, this is Virus and it's a bit like Police Noughts and Quo Vardis, which is like an RTS game. Both of these have a lot of Japanese text and I looked on Sega Gaga Domain, which I usually do before I buy Japanese games and it gives you an idea of how you know how playable they are if you don't speak Japanese and these are semi-playable and the idea is to hopefully try and learn some of the Japanese off the games it's probably the best way of learning because otherwise you know you look at a language and you, you never use it and you forget it as soon as you've looked at it uh, this is Super, uh, not Super Pan, uh, Saturn Bomberman rather so I've got the PAL version of that as well, I got that uh, as a set of games so this is Toge King the Spirits so this is a like Initial D style game. It's got a good reputation, it's got a very good draw distance but the frame rate's a bit so-so. So it's good though, it's, it's it's not as good as Initial D on the, the PSP or the, the arcade but it's not bad. So this is Super Robot Wars Final. Again if you like your robot fighting games or kind of Pokemon style games you'll you'll like this. If not, you probably won't. But it's got robots from a lot of series like Gundam. Oh, it's got to be Paint Shop Pro. <laughs> it's the one before they uh, changed it from being postcardware. Which is why I keep that version. Because it's, uh, it's a good little tool. And... What's this? Yeah, this is my... You probably noticed a lot of Yes memorabilia. This is when I saw them in 2009. So it was a memory stick. And... Camera, analog camera, Dreamcast, keyboard, 56k modem, which I might use with my Amiga and the ST, and that's an upgrade for an old G3 Mac. So if I turn around to give a bit of a view now, so that this is my desk where I have it's a TV, but I have a computer hooked up, up to it as well, so it it works as both, and I find that the picture quality is good enough for you know computer use and uh, I'm not really I know some people like interlaced CRTs but I'm I'm not that fussed so it, it, it's good enough for what I want and I can hook the Amiga up to it as well you don't have to worry about a flicker fixer and the machine that I have permanently set up is the Mega Drive Mark 1 so there are really three in the collection I I bought this one boxed and because of that I'm reluctant to try and uh, file down the cartridge slot so this is Thunder Force 2 running which is a Japanese copy uh, so it's got the cartridge extender there and then down here I have a few machines that are always permanently set up I, so I used to have the Mega Drive down here so I've got the a Model 2 Saturn which has got the Action Replay 4-in-1 cartridge PS1 and a Dreamcast and then a box full of cables and this on the left no one's asked me about it yet but this is a cooler this is a fan and what I used to use this for was when the Dreamcast used to overheat if I kept that blowing on it it would never overheat and under the desk is a guitar effects pedal for my guitar stuff and there's a Raspberry Pi on there and a gaming PC right so hopefully that's given a bit of a an overview into my games room and uh, how I've managed to pack this into a fairly small space so there you go hopefully some people are still <laughs> with me this will be quite a long video I think I'll have to edit it into four or five separate videos and just upload it over the space of about a week. So there you go. So that is, oh, there's, and there's the tripod making its appearance. That's it. So thanks for watching.